When is a model steam engine not worth rebuilding? Part 11. This was a potential job from a few years ago. The more I looked at this steam plant, the less I wanted to work on it. I returned the plant to the customer, packed much better than it was when I first received it in the post. Some of these small brass engines from China are very well made, but some others are quite the reverse. This one is sort of OK, but there are a few problems that I really am not prepared to put right. As you can see, it is a twin-cylinder engine fitted with Stevenson's link reversing gear, and it works OK. The gearbox, on the other hand, with an integral water pump, is really not a good idea. The wooden base must be quite soft, because the four screw threads are a rattle fit in the holes in the wooden base. Looking at this gearbox in detail, it really is very well made. Ball racers fitted where they need to be, and an integral water pump make it a really useful device for driving twin propellers from a single engine. Does the engine run? Well, yes indeed it does. There's no live audio on this one. The footage was taken from a video I made a few years ago all about a model steam plant bought online. So why am I making this video using existing footage? The answer being because I haven't had much time this week to work on video projects because I've had a couple of hospital visits which were quite important. One of the procedures was a cystoscopy to have a look at my bladder and prostate and I'm pleased to announce that everything seems okay. Even though the thought of the operation filled me with dread for a few days, but when I was there laid on the table, there was an initial spike of pain and then it was just very interesting watching my insides on a TV screen. At the same hospital, I also had an ultrasound scan of my kidneys and there is a bit of a problem there, that's down to the diabetes. A visit to another medical facility was to have an ECG because I need to take some medication for my diabetes because I don't take any at all, I control it the best I can by not eating too much sugar and carbohydrates. The spirit is willing, but sometimes the flesh is very weak, and I do binge out on carbohydrates. But this week, I've stopped doing that. My carbohydrate intake is much lower than it was. My prostate gland has been damaged by the radiation, but everything's OK. The bladder and prostate are cancer-free. And to be honest, I'm quite pleased about that. I know people are going to comment, I didn't subscribe to this channel to hear about prostate and medical issues, but let me tell you, if you are male and over 40 or 50 years of age, have a PSA test, it could save your life. What am I doing in this bit? I'm measuring the distance from the safety valve to this clamp on the chimney. I was thinking at this stage about fitting a safety valve exhaust pipe, but the more I looked at this boiler, the more I decided it wasn't a good idea. Why is it wobbling about like this? Well, that is damage in the post. But it is not the fault of the postal service. Whoever packed this didn't have a big enough box, so part of the chimney was stuck through the top. And the constant movement in transit has damaged the base. The base is no longer flat, and it was only held to the base using one wood screw anyway, which is now very loose, as you can see. On the part of the video that was running when I was speaking, some of the grub screws on the valve gear were also loose, so the whole thing is rattling about. And this drive to the gearbox needed adjusting because it was in the wrong place and was tightening up. Eventually the gearbox became very smooth, and it's a really nice looking thing. If only the gears were made from phosphor bronze. Anyway, I gave the gears a good oiling, with the oil mixture that I used to use at that time, which was 50% steam oil, 25% 3-in-1 oil, and 25% rapeseed oil, also known as canola oil. You need to use the first pressing of this stuff. And I was told by a scientist at an oil refinery that I worked at for a while, fixing the computers, and he told me that rapeseed oil, or canola oil, is a really good anti-friction additive, and indeed it is. When I put it to the test, it's incredibly good. Once upon a time, I was running a model steam engine, and as it was running, I applied a very small amount of rapeseed oil to the bearings, and suddenly the engine went a lot faster. I think that proves the point. A friend of mine, the late Bernard Walker, used to work on the railways, 
and when I told him about the rapeseed oil being an anti-friction additive, he nodded and told me an interesting story from his time on the railways. He said that they used to go to the superintendent's office and ask for a drop of the special stuff if they had a locomotive fitted with a central connecting rod inside the frames that was running hot, or even to cool down hot axle boxes. You live and learn. I still add some rapeseed oil to my oil mixture, that is, the lubricating oil mixture. I do not add it to steam oil, and the bearings of all engines in my personal collection are in really good order. After tightening up the linkages on the engine, the reversing gear does work considerably better than it did. There's a bit of play here and there, but it's a very small engine. And as a mass-produced item, I suppose it's OK. The engine goes forward and it goes backwards. I'm not impressed with the fits of the stainless steel shafts into the brass blocks. And because the screw threads on the gearbox don't grip the wood, that wobbles about all over the place. Before I send the steam plant back to the customer, with my apologies for not repairing it, I do need to fix this. In this clip, I'm removing the boiler shell from the base plate. It's held in place, as you can see, by brass bolts. Now I can lift the boiler barrel off the base, and here you can see what the problem is. Owing to the constant movement of the boiler, because the chimney was actually sticking out of the package, the soft copper base has become concave. All I need to do is remove the central screw and flatten the base very carefully using a piece of wood and a hammer. And now when I screw the mounting plate back into the baseboard, it's nice and flat. For transit, I am not going to refit the boiler to the base. What I'm doing though, so I don't lose them, is refitting the brass bolts. The main boiler barrel will be packed separately with plenty of bubble wrap inside the main package. A quick look inside the boiler while I had it in my hand told me that this was quite well made. It has a centre cross water tube flue and the rest are fire tubes. The burner arrangement is a bit puzzling. Question is, where is the burner and how does it fit in this firebox? Anyway, it's not my problem. I cannot repair things that are not going to be good once I've repaired them. And that's it. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.